We sent surveys to students in five different units in the School of Social Sciences at the University of Manchester. In all these units, course conveners had implemented discussion boards. We asked students in April and May 2020 about their experiences with these discussion boards. We received close to 200 responses, mainly from year one and two students. The respondents gave very detailed responses to some open text questions. And here I will summarize some of the findings which arose from these responses, mainly focusing on those which have implications for teaching staff. Students were asked how useful the discussion board was for their learning. They were asked to respond on a scale from zero to 100, where higher numbers represent more usefulness. Year one students, on average, responded with 60, year two students with 71, and year three students with 75. So clearly, more experienced students appreciate the value discussion boards bring to their learning more than newer students. We did ask students how they would like teaching staff to engage on discussion boards, and we then attempted to categorize the answers into a few groups. A large group of students wanted staff to give more detailed responses to student questions. This is perhaps understandable knowing that a number of the colleagues in the units of which we are students, firstly, merely monitor and moderate and comment on student answers. However, there's also a large group of students who sort of vindicated that approach by teaching staff as they indicated that they wanted teaching staff to do exactly that, merely moderate and respond and correct rather than immediately answer questions. But in either case, many of the students did ask for timely responses or interventions by teaching staff, such as the time frames ranged from one to three days. Lastly, a good number of students also suggested that staff should ensure that they, where appropriate, point students to resources either existing in the course or resources extending beyond the content of the unit, and they should use the discussion board for that purpose. We also asked students what they were hoping fellow students would contribute to discussion boards and what would make them more likely to read posts, ask questions, and respond to other students' questions. A quite clear picture emerges. Most students wish that discussion boards would become a more active place, a more communal place, a friendly place, and importantly, a more organized place. They want students to ask clearly formulated questions, ideally with initial thoughts or workings attached, and importantly, with good descriptive titles. In fact, you as teaching staff may have to invest time at the beginning of your course to help students write informative titles for their posts. Students say that they themselves would be more likely to actively engage if they felt there was a community of students happy to provide encouragement and support to other students. It is clear that teaching staff, meaning course directors and teaching assistants, should set such a tone on the discussion board. I know that colleagues have justifiably different views on whether students should be allowed to post anonymously or not, and there are indeed a range of pros and cons on either side. However, from our survey, it is very clear that the overwhelming majority of students would much prefer to be able to post anonymously. Students do see discussion boards as one potential vehicle to support the building of a community of learners. Some suggestions which would contribute here are to post regular questions, perhaps challenging ones, which they would be encouraged to tackle together on the discussion board, but perhaps also to use discussion boards to regularly link content to real-world problems and examples and encourage student discussion of issues which may well go beyond accessible content. The biggest hurdle for many students to answering questions themselves is that they feel that they have to be 100% correct before responding to a question. If you as a course director feel that it could be beneficial to have posts which perhaps require clarification or even corrections, then you will have to do two things. First, you got to encourage students 
to see being wrong or uncertain as merely an important staging post to learning and understanding. And secondly, you need to ensure that students know that the teaching staff will monitor the discussion board and ensure that misconceptions and mistakes are pointed out and corrected. Of course, always in the spirit of support to students. Finally, we ask students what they, if they were a course director, would do to encourage students to engage more on discussion boards. Most of them, being good social scientists, in particular economists, mentioned incentives. They ranged from uh, marks all the way to good old hard cash. The second most frequent category of suggestions were to provide exclusive material on the discussion board. This could be extension material, real world links to the material, or perhaps questions which invite students to a discussion or to answer them collaboratively. Often mentioned was the request for staff to show an active presence on the discussion board, be that through the setting of questions, commenting on given answers, or the direct answering of questions. The important issue here is that teaching staff have a very clear and obvious presence on the discussion board. The discussion board cannot be perceived as a semi-disconnected place in which only struggling students attempt to have questions answered. This also links to the next biggest group of suggestions in which students point out that the discussion board should be actively connected to the remainder of the unit. This should happen in both directions. Students should be sent to the discussion board from other areas in the course, such as lectures or tutorials, which may point to further discussion questions, but also from the discussion board back into the remainder of the course. Teaching staff should pick up on interesting discussions and important questions raised on the discussion board and discuss these in turn in the lecture, in the tutorial or in live Q&A sessions. A good number of students also suggested creating discussion boards for smaller groups of students, like tutorial groups, as they would be likely to feel more comfortable contributing in that smaller context. As always, you as the lecturer will have to decide to implement what you are confident helps your student to learn. But the feedback presented here could serve as a useful input into this process. In summary, the students whom we surveyed overwhelmingly indicate that discussion boards can make a positive contribution to their learning. To facilitate this, discussion boards should be a communal place of support for students in which teaching staff make important contributions.